This is my life. My family, my children. I am free in Christ and it feels amazing. Welcome back. That was a glimpse inside the newfound freedom ginger. Duggar Vulo now shares with her family in Los Angeles. She now says she's finally free of the cult-like religious upbringing that consumed her life since childhood. And joining us now is Ginger's husband, Jeremy Volo. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for joining us. Two beautiful daughters, ages two and four, Felicity and Evangeline. Mm -hmm. um, how do you describe Ginger as a mom today? Oh man, she's, well, you can already see she's an amazing woman, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, uh, li life with her is sweet, and when I married her, I, I realized that very quickly, that life with, with her would be sweet. And then just seeing her blossom into a mom as well. I mean, they're the luckiest two little girls in the world, so. They are. They're That's great. <laughs> you all met, you're a retired professional soccer player. You were on your journey to study, to become a pastor, and you entered this world yeah. that no one could prepare you for. Um, did you see the free ginger that other people believe that they saw, that there's someone who was trying to break free from this? I, I, I did. I, I was very naive mm -hmm. to the theology and didn't really understand that world. So I was just friends with uh, her brother-in-law, and he invited me to kind of meet the family. And ben? I was just... Ben, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I was just kind of naive to it all and just met her and realized, wow, this girl's amazing. Yeah. We started to get, get to know each other. Um, and I really saw her heart. I saw what you're seeing today, yeah. that passion, that love for God, mm -hmm. and that love for other people, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah, you know, and it's, as I said, it's like, <laughs> I know earlier, Ginger, we showed an excerpt from your diary when you were talking about the individual who lead or led the church, and in the diary, you talked about um, people not having faith in one person. It's not an individual mm -hmm. that you should pour in so many words that you said in your diary. It, it is the belief in God. How do you balance it when there's been such a betrayal? You know, the, the words that are supposed to inspire us, the words that are supposed to keep people kind, the words that you were studying to become a pastor are used, as you said, to harm children and to harm families. How do you, how do you find your faith when you've been betrayed in that way, you feel? It's such a difficult thing because you take these words and view them in a certain way because a teacher has told you that. And it's been a journey for me of disentangling, taking out the air. It's a slow process of examining Did you feel everything. brainwashed? Is it like you are reprogramming yeah. your brain? Is that what disentangling I, I wasn't, means? Yes, because I, I think I wasn't really taught critical thinking and how to think yeah. for myself. I was taught, like, this is the right answer. So I'd always be yeah. thinking, what's the right answer? What's the right answer? Instead of, like, viewing everything and thinking critically through it for myself, I just would give an answer from Bill Gothard's teaching or think that that was true. Or do an action. Like, I'm looking at you now. You have on pants. Right. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> I mean, like these, it's, so it's not just the thinking, it's the action. Right, and it's everything, everything falls in line with that because it takes years of like, okay, I was told that rock music was gonna bring me harm. I can't roll my sleeves. I mean, I can buy a shirt that's sleeveless. I can roll my sleeves up. It's like this weird letter of the law that I would follow for so many years, all these rules. And once I saw it's not in the Bible, then I would just, it would just not be an issue anymore. And so that's how my life has changed throughout the years. But it's hard whenever you are reading the same words of God that a man has twisted for his own gain. Yeah. Anytime a teacher claims to speak for God but doesn't, it's painful and it's hard to, to walk through that. But it's so worth it at the end of the day because my faith is more important to me than ever because I'm not trusting in, like you said, a man. Yeah. I'm running to Jesus because people will always let me down but I know that I can just run to Jesus himself and he'll be there for me. Jeremy, I know that you're so proud of her and to see her make this uh, triumphant decision for herself and ultimately for your girls. Yeah, it, it means the world. And uh, just to be by her side and to support her along this journey has been a real honor for me. So oh, thank you both for joining us. Thank you thank so much you. for trusting me to come on. The book is out today, Becoming Free Indeed, my story of disentangling faith from fear 
in stores now, and the entire studio audience, you're going home with this heartfelt book written by a very brave young woman. Thank you so much, Cindy.